Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. I got my Cheney University hoodie on. This is some of my Cheney, Cheney paraphernalia where I teach at sometimes. And shout out to Octavius Cato, the late Octavius Cato, and Fanny Jackson Coppin. So if you're not familiar with those two names, definitely go do some research. Go look them up. They were instrumental in the development of Cheney University way back in the day when it used to be called the Institute for Colored Youth. And it's low, it was located down in South Philly in the 19th century and all that. All right, now, what are we doing today? We are going to simplify two rational expressions. Now, why are they called rational expressions? Because, basically, because they're fractions. Fractions are rational expressions. That's basically it. And even though this looks a little more complicated than a typical fraction, it's still a fraction, right? You got a fraction bar, you got a numerator, and all this is a denominator. You got a fraction bar, you got a numerator, and all this is a denominator. Now, one thing you got to know is, that hopefully you remember, is that you can't add or subtract fractions unless the denominators are equivalent. The denominators got to be the same, exactly the same. If they're not exactly the same, then you cannot add or subtract. And this is a subtraction problem, right? This is a subtraction problem. So we can't, we can't do nothing with this in this format because th even though this is a 2x squared, that's a 2x squared, this is a negative 7x. This is a negative x. They are not the same thing. This is a negative 4. This is a negative 1. They are not the same thing. So we got to do something about that, right? What we can do is find what's called an LCD, least common denominator, or lowest common denominator, LCD, right? So because this is a quadratic trinomial, quadratic, biggest exponent is a 2, and it's a trinomial because it's got 1, 2, 3 terms, they both quadratic trinomials. You should factor them first. Before you find an LCD, you should factor. So you got to know how to factor. So go over to, if you don't remember how to factor, go over to um, my playlist on factoring quadratic trinomials where A does not equal 1. Because this number right here in front of the X squared, that's in the space of what we call variable A. Right? And then I give you, I got a bunch of videos on there on how to factor quadratic trinomials. All right? But you got to factor your denominator first, and then you find... Well, factor each of your denominators first if they're not already in factor form, which these are not. And then you got to find the LCD. So first, let's factor. All right, so check this out, right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor this one right here. So I'm going to bring this 3 over. And I know how to factor this. It's going to be two binomials. All right, now it's a lot of different ways that we can factor fact quadratic trinomials. But... I'm going to just do the trial and error method because um, I've seen these a whole lot. I've, I've seen thousands of these. So that's why it gets easier when you've had a lot of practice. All right. When you just start now, it's a little rough, but, you know, that's par for the course. So I put the 2x and the x right here because those are the factors of 2x squared. 2x times x gives you 2x squared. And then I'm looking for factors of negative 4 that are going to make this an equivalent expression to this. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do... Minus 4 right here and plus 1 right here. Now, how did I know to do that? How did I know? I know because I've just done thousands of these problems. That's how I know, right? That's part of it, at least. But with the trial and error method, what you want to do is you want to take factors of the last number and you're going to put them here and here. I could have put 2 and 2. Well, 1 would have to be negative because that's a negative 4, right? You got to know the rules for arithmetic, right? But I put the numbers in there until I figure out which setup is going to give me an expression that if I multiply it out, is going to be equal to the original trinomial. So I need to know which setup is going to be equal to the original trinomial if I was to multiply this out. Now, using the FOIL method, you probably heard of the FOIL method before. Using the FOIL method, I'm going to get this. Because look, 2x times x is going to give me the 2x squared. 2x times negative 4 is going to give me the negative 8x. 1 times x is going to give me the positive 1x. If you combine those two, the negative 8x and the 1x, that's going to give me the negative 7x. And I already know I'm going to have negative 4 because positive 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. So that's called the trial and error method. That's the trial and error method where you just got to take the factors of the last number and just throw them in the, la in the second slots right here or the last slots until you get a combination that works, right? It's like you're playing a game. You're just trying to figure out what's going to work, right? That's the trial and error method. It's a bunch of other different methods we could use too, right? And like I said, I got I got different 
videos where I explain how to use those other methods also. But what I'm doing right now for the sake of time is just the trial and error method. So then we go and factor this one right here, right? We take the factors of 2x squared. That's going to be 2x and x. This is easy to do because 2 is a prime number. 2 don't have a whole bunch of factors, right? 2 don't got a whole bunch of factors. So then I go to this number right here at the end. Now, negative 1 is neither prime nor composite, but it's in a class all by itself. But it only has one factor, 1. And that's a negative 1, so you got no choice but to just do um, what a, the question is. Which of the ones should be positive? Because one got to be positive and one got to be negative. Why? Because when they multiply together, they got to equal a negative. And two negatives can't multiply together and equal a negative. And two positives can't multiply together and equal a negative. So the only question for you is like, which one going to be negative and which one going to be positive? So let me see. Um, this one's going to be negative. I already know. Because if you do the FOIL, 2x times x, that's how you get the 2x squared. Outside, 2x times negative 1 negative 2x. Inside, 1 times x, positive 1x. Combine them together, you get a negative x. And that's what we got right here, right? You combine the two terms together to get the middle term. And then you already know 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. All right, so now we got factor form, right? We factored the denominators. So now we can look, think about finding the LCD. Now, the LCD is going to be a combination of every expression, every binomial that you see. All right, so what you do is this, right? And I'm going to switch the color up for this one. Um, let's do blue for Cheney. Cheney color is blue, right? So my LCD is going to be, I look at this denominator and this denominator, and I look for expressions that show up, right? And then I ask myself, what's the maximum amount of times you see it? So I see a 2x plus 1, right? It shows up one time in this denominator. But then over here, it shows up one time in this denominator. So the maximum amount of times I see it is once. So that means it's going to be once in my LCD. So think about what I just did. I said, okay, I see this binomial, 2x plus 1 right here, right? It shows up one time in this denominator. It shows up one time in that denominator. You look for the maximum amount of times that it shows up, and that's how many times it's going to show up in your LCD. All right, so that's just a rule. Right, so 2x plus 1 is part of my LCD, and then I see x minus 4. x minus 4 shows up one time in this denominator. It shows up zero times over here. What's the max? 1. It shows up once, maximum. So it's going to show up in the LCD once. Right? Now, over here. Now, we already dealt with 2x plus 1, so we don't got to worry about that no more. But this x minus 1, we ain't dealt with the x minus 1 yet, right? X minus 1 shows up one time in this denominator. Then we go back over here because we got to compare. What's the maximum amount of times that each factor shows up in each denominator? It shows up once over here. It shows up zero times over here. What's bigger, 1 or 0? 1. 1 is the maximum amount of times it shows up. So it's going to be in LCD one time. So that means this is our LCD right here. This is our LCD. 2x plus 1 times x minus 4 times x minus 1. That's our LCD. All right? So now what we're about to do is we're going to basically combine these two fractions, right, into one fraction with a common denominator. So the common denominator is going to be this right here, right? So we got 2x plus 1 times x minus 4 times x minus 1. Now the question is, what's my numerator going to be, though? We know what the denominator is, but what's my numerator, my numerator is going to be? This is how we figure it out. You take the LCD, right? Take the LCD, divided by the original denominator. Take the LCD, divided by the original denominator. You take that quotient and multiply it by the original numerator. The same thing you do when you add and subtract fractions that look regular, like three-fourths minus two-thirds, and you had to find the LCD. Right. Let's use that use that butterfly method. Well, I call it the Malcolm X method because you got to draw X right with the numbers. But it's the same concept. It just looks different because now we're dealing with algebraic expressions instead of just numbers, just integers or whole numbers. Right. But it's the same concept. Right. The same game. It's just different players. That's all it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I divide it by this. Now, if I did that, the 2x plus one and this 2x plus one would cancel out. 
the x minus 4 and this x minus 4 would cancel out, right? But I would still be left with this x minus 1, though. So x minus 1 would be my quotient. That's what I would be left with because this would cancel with this and this would cancel with this. Pay careful attention to that. What? Pay careful attention to what cancels out. The 2x plus 1 cancels with the 2x plus 1. The x minus 4 cancels with the x minus 4. So they gone. But what's left, though? This x minus 1. So you take that x minus 1 and you multiply it by the original numerator. So it's going to be a 3. I'm going to put the 3 in front. It don't matter if you put it in front or back, but I like to put it in front. So 3 times the quantity x minus 1, right? Then you take this minus sign. You put it right there. And then you do the same thing. You take the LCD divided by the original denominator. Take the LCD divided by the original denominator. One more time. Take the LCD divided by the original denominator. So what happens to the 2x plus 1s? Since they're the same thing, they cancel out, right? Then x minus 4 does not cancel out because there's no x minus 4 in here. But the x minus 1s, they do cancel out. So what you left with? x minus 4. You left with x minus 4 because the 2x plus 1 cancels with that 2x plus 1. They divide out with each other. The x minus 1s divide out with each other, leaving you with just x minus 4. So it's going to be x minus 4 times 1, and anything times 1 is just that thing. So this is minus x minus 4. And use your parentheses because, especially because of this minus sign, meaning the minus sign, because the parentheses indicate that the minus sign affects everything in this expression, both of these terms. All right? So now, now our job is to simplify the numerator. So we're just going to distribute the 3, distribute the 3, and then combine like terms. Distribute the 3 and distribute this negative 1, because this minus sign is really a negative 1, really. Right? If you just see a minus sign in front of parentheses, that really means you're doing negative 1 times everything inside of it. All right? So look, this is what it's going to look like. 3x minus 3 minus x plus 4. And then you rewrite the denominator, which was our LCD. All right? So you got that, right? So now check this out. What's going to happen is now you combine like terms. So this 3x and this negative x, you're going to combine them. So that's going to become 2x. 3x minus x is 2x. And then this negative 3 and this positive 4, you combine them. Negative 3 and positive 4, you combine them, and you get positive 1. So now you got 2x plus 1. And now write your LCD again. Now, you look at your problem, you size it up, you take a step back and look at it, and then you wonder, like, okay, is there anything else I could do to simplify this? I can. This is a 2x plus 1, and this is a 2x plus 1. And because that's a whole expression, whole expressions can cancel out with each other, right? But I can't, this, this, this is a mistake that a lot of people make. You can't just cancel this x with this x right here. You can't cancel this 1 with this 1 right here, because this 1 is part of a binomial, x minus 1. Right? Think of this x and this negative 1 as a couple. They go together. They can't be separated. Right? Um, but this 2x plus 1 is equivalent to this 2x plus 1. So that means I can cancel this with that. And this becomes a 1. So that means my final answer. I'll write my final answer right here. My numerator is 1. And I'm left with just x minus 4 times x minus 1. That's my final answer. So in order to simplify these, basically all we did was we subtracted two fractions. I know it don't look like it because you see all these variables, right? Because it don't look like, you know, the elementary school subtracting fractions that we did. But we just subtracted fractions. That's all we did. We did the same process, but you had to know how to factor, though. You had to know how to factor, right? You got to know how to factor quadratic trinomials in order to get this. Then once you factor everything out in the denominator, then you can find the LCD. You find the LCD by looking at each factor and then asking yourself, what's the maximum amount of times you see that factor in each of these fractions? The 2x plus 1, I see it once here. I see it once here. The max is 1. We see it a maximum one time. We don't see it twice. We don't see it three times. And, and okay, that might be confusing because technically you do see it twice. But we talk about within each fraction. Within each fraction, what's the maximum amount that you see it, right? In this fraction, I see it once. In this fraction, I also see it once. It's not the cumulative amount that we're looking for, right? 
we want to know what's the maximum amount of times you see it within each fraction. So I see this one time in this fraction. I see this one time in this fraction. So the maximum is once. Now you'll encounter problems where you might have, you might have had 2x plus 1 squared. If you had 2x plus 1 squared, that's like saying 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. So the max in that fraction would be twice. And then the max in this fraction would be once. 2 is more than 1. So that means you would put 2x plus 1 squared in the LCD. So it's all about identifying the original factors and then asking yourself, what's the maximum amount of times they show up in each fraction? And then once you identify that, then you say, okay, well, whatever the max is, that's how many times I'm going to throw it in my LCD. So I see it once in this fraction. I see it once in this fraction. So the max is one. So that means I throw it in my LCD one time. Same thing with X minus four. I see it once here. I see it zero times over here. So the max is one. So I throw it in my LCD once. Same thing with X minus one. I see it once over here. I see it zero times over here. So the max is once. So I throw it in my LCD once. And then I got an LCD. From there, you just divide by the original denominator. And then whatever your quotient is, whatever you left with, you're going to multiply by the numerator. And that's what we did right here. That's how we got 3x minus 3. And we did the same thing over here. LCD divided by the original denominator. Then you take that, multiply it by the original numerator. That's how we got this right here. And then we distribute the negative 1, because that minus sign is really a negative 1. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, like I said, um, this is a good problem. This is a good skill to know. This is simplifying rational expressions or adding and subtracting rational expressions, right? But you got it's a lot of skills you got to bring to the table. You, you got to bring some things to the table in order to be able to do this. All right. But you can always practice. All right. So go find some problems like this. Go get some practice. And I'll catch up with you on the next video. Shout out to Cheney University. Peace.